John says, hi, Captain Steve, and we're back up in the Nexus, and we're right by Helios. He's over there toiling away, but yeah, here we are, up here again, on a Saturday. And firstly, Chums, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who gave me Super Chats the other month. I'm going to put your names on the screen right now, so thank you very much for all of your support, and yeah, that's awesome. That's going towards my PS5 sort of fund, so thank you very much, Chums. All appreciated. Anyway, so moving on, moving on. Right here, so speculation-wise, so there's quite a lot of speculation to have this week, Chums. I mean, last week's um, weekend mission gave us the name of Dabi, and also a code like RL0, A12, and W80. Now, if you Google that string of characters and numbers, it comes up with all sorts, like rotation of planets and all sorts of stuff, which is pretty gnarly. And, yeah, there's also the name of Daphine. And Daphine is like um, Greek mythology. So that she was actually a water nymph and goddess of rivers and things. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's a hint that we might get rivers in the very near future. Perhaps even waterfalls, who knows? I'm, I'm speculating. So yeah, it could be that or it could be nothing. But it's very rarely nothing. They usually put things in purposefully. And they also use the word generation. But then generation, every time you die, it comes up with next generation. It tells you how many generations you've gone through. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But, yep, then there's also the egg speculation. Now I've got my own thoughts on the egg. So one, one is, we've, got to, we've actually got two eggs inside the data mine files. There was the story egg, and then there's the mystery egg. Now I'm hoping the mystery egg, when you go to the Quicksilver Merchant, you can buy multiples. Now if that triggered a story... I don't think you'd be buying multiples. I mean, why would you? So I'm wondering whether that one is going to be that you can place an egg on a planet by a farm and it causes a spawn of one of the creatures on the planet. The mystery egg sort of absorbs the DNA, if you like, from the creatures of that planet and one spawns there. So at least then, if you want to milk a creature, you're guaranteed to have one by your base because you've just placed an egg spawn type location. So that's my thought on the uh, mystery egg. But then... I would love it if that mystery egg was something more than that. I would love it if it actually let you create your own fauna. You know, like uh, the game Spawn from all those years ago. If it did that, that'd be freaking amazing. But I think that's over speculation and over wanting this from myself. So yeah, I don't think that's going to happen in realistic terms. But if it did, they've exceeded everything I could hope for on that one. That'd be so cool to make your own fauna and put it out in the verse, wouldn't it? You know, people want variety. Let the user base make the variety. I mean. That's just, you know what I mean? Yep, and then there's the story egg, which people seem to have forgotten about. It was in the data mine files. Now, I know that Zane has put out a video on what he feels the eggs are going to do, or the mystery egg might do, or the void egg, as he calls it, um, which, yeah, I'm going to be giving a link to Zane's channel later on in this video when I'm doing spotlights for a completely different reason. But if you haven't come across Zane's world, go check out his video on the egg, because he's got quite a lot of information there that is pretty damn amazing. So yeah, go check that one out. And yeah, so that's that's it for all my speculation so far, Chums. But that's, that's a fair bit to speculate on, isn't it? It really is. But yeah, I would say, because the story egg is in the game files, I was thinking that that egg might unlock a new quest line, a new story. You know, we had the uh, update that was Visions and also the Abyss, and they came out very close together. And the previous year, Sean just put out a uh, an emoji of a rainbow, just a singular emoji of a rainbow. And I'm wondering whether this singular emoji of an egg symbolises that this sort of update may be on par with the Visions or the Abyss. The Abyss brought us some storyline where Visions brought us a few new extra features such as the exotic planets and rainbows. And I'm wondering whether this new egg, the story egg, might bring us some lore and also some subtle game-changing things like maybe rivers and, and um, maybe even uh, waterfalls because we've got the Daphne or that being uh, mentioned. But yeah, that's, that's speculation over. So on to spotlights. So because I mentioned Zane, we'll move on to Zane first. So Zane's World has done a awesome, awesome video on how to make stasis devices. And he's given a link to his stasis farm, which he's built for the actual player base to actually go and visit. So yeah, go and check that out. I will be putting a card at the top there. Amazing work, Zane. Thanking you. Awesome, sterling effort. But yeah, it, it, I think it's only on one platform, forgive me if I'm wrong. So yeah, it might not be for everybody, but at least it gives you an idea of how to make your own. If you want to make your own stasis farm, take a look at his video. Because stasis devices get you a lot of units. But yeah, it, it does take quite a long time to get the setup right. But once you've got it there, it's all good. 
Okay, so the next shout out is going to go to Boyd. Now Boyd made an awesome bass for me some time ago. Uh, Boyd Zoid, as I called it. It's a big canine robot dog. It's an awesome bass. It's my favourite bass. I would be sitting in there and delivering this, but every time I went into camera mode, it just froze everything. Where the Nexus and multiplayer, it doesn't. So that's where I am right now. Okay, so yeah, uh, Boyd has done an awesome bass in collaboration with Eric's. I think I've pronounced that correct. It's double E, R C S, and they have made Stark's Mansion. And oh my days, is it good! I love the doors that open up in there. They've used the um, automatic doors, or whatever, the power doors or the power wall. And it, oh, what they've done is just amazing. There should be a video playing up there so you can see just how amazing it is. But for the full thing, hit the card, jump over there, take a look because it's ah, oh, it's amazing, chums, amazing. Right. So my next shout out goes to Scott Gust. So Scott Gust, he's making his own modded sort of things for No Man's Sky on PC. It's called the Chimera build. And he's made some stunning, stunning planets. I'm playing one video up at the top there at the moment, but his channel is just full of these amazing, variety-filled planets. It's just unbelievable. If we could get some of that variety into game, I would be blown away. Some of these planets are magical. What he's done is fucking art. It's an art form. It freaking is. I can't wait to see more from Mr. Gust. I love it every time he puts up a video. Check him out and if it's for you, hit subscribe. Right, so what else we got? Oh, No Man's Sky Assistant. So the chap that's made the Android um, app and also, excuse me, the iPhone app, uh, he's got his own channel now and it's actually pretty good content. So yeah, go check him out and I'll be putting the, the link to the app if you missed it. That's the um, No Man's Sky Assistant app in the description of this video. Okay, can't say fairer than that. And yeah, I, so any other shout outs? What else? Lord Minion. Yes, yeah, so he um he covered No Man's Sky about three years ago. He'd done a quick play on it. And he's just come back three years later to give his uh, sort of thoughts and feelings on the game. And you can see him playing out the tutorial. Now the tutorial, as we all know, chumps, hasn't changed all that much. I have put a comment in his videos saying the sort of things that have changed and the things that haven't changed just to give him a bit of a heads up but I really enjoyed watching him play and um, his sort of take on how it's actually evolved so yeah I'm gonna put a link up there to his uh, video that I watched that I found quite interesting so yeah although this is a shout out to things that I've seen in the community that are quite awesome it's also things that I watched enjoyed thoroughly and you know I watched the full thing without you know wanting to put it down so if I were liked it hopefully you're gonna like it so yeah go check that out if you're looking for some No Man's Sky content so yeah so that kind of brings me nearly to an end of everything here Johns however what I would say is I know that a lot of my uh, speculation is based on some of the stuff that we've had from a leaked source but if I had to come up with my own sort of idea for what I would like to see in an update I would very much like another sort of synthesis update that gives polish to current features. So customization, so ship recolouring and decals, I think that's long overdue. That would be awesome to get ship customization and decals. And it could be handled from the um, scrapping machine in a similar sort of vein. I think that could work quite nicely, especially with these new banners. Maybe we can put banners on our ship and decals and things. It would be quite good to get quicksilver items for ship customization, especially since we're going to get them not in the bobblehead things. So yeah, that could work quite nicely. Also freighter class upgrading color and decals and I'm thinking they could do that from the galactic map so you know when you're choosing the system to jump through maybe there might be a marker for a, a freighter yard and you just select there you jump that you can only jump there from your fre freighter console if you've got some sort of I don't know tech installed so you can actually dock with something and then you can change the color of all your frigates and your freighter because at the moment, chums, I look like I'm, fly I'm flying circus. I've got coloured ships of every freaking variety. It's a bit mental. It'd be nice to make them look consistent, like a proper fleet, you know, like they're actually one tangible thing. That'd be cool. Uh, right, so yeah, multi-tools as well. I'd like to see the ability to upgrade the slottage on a multi-tool. I sometimes come across the little exotic pistols. They look like the starting one, but they're really, really cool. The experimental pistols. It'd be nice to get those fully slotted and upgraded and maybe change the colour a little bit and tweak them. That'd be nice. Right, so things to do. I think, you know, the missions that you get, the Quicksilver missions at the moment. Not the weekend missions, but the normal run of the mill, mill Quicksilver missions. It'd be nice to see photography added to that, finding a relic, uh, repairing and scrapping of ship missions, kill predator type missions, scanning missions. Yeah, just more missions. A little bit like what you get in the station mission variety inside of the Nexus mission variety, just to mix it up a little bit. You know, they could put them on rotation or something, just anything, because 
those missions are getting a little bit, you know, you're running them all the time. Okay, so cooking. I feel that we, we had creature pens in farms. So, yeah, if you, if you do manage to lure some creatures in, perhaps it keeps them there. So next time you go to your base, it's not random chance if your creatures are going to be there or not. I mean, if you're having a farm for milking and then you've got nothing to milk, it's a bit redundant. So that would be nice to have some way of spawning in creatures. That's why I thought maybe the mystery egg is going to do that, you know. And right, Kronos up in the uh, Nexus. Give him a nutrient refiner right there that you can use so you don't have to keep flying out and then crafting stuff together. It'd be nice to be able to craft things on the actual Nexus. And it'd also be great to be able to select what you want to give him rather than him just selecting what he wants. And he comes up with the four things that you didn't want to give him. No, you can't have my freaking sweetened compost. I need that for a mission. Whoops, I accidentally selected it. Darn. Yeah, that, that's kind of annoying. It'd be nice to be able to select what you want to give him and in bulk so you can hand it in in one go because it takes ages. I nearly fell asleep doing it when I was handing in something like 400 donuts. Uh, it was, that's, that's not fun. That's not fun. And yeah, so better nanite yield as well for those donuts. I mean, I can make bread in half the time it takes me to make donuts, yet the bread nearly nets me as many nanites as the donuts. It's mental. So I may as well just make bread. And that's a bit boring. I love making donuts. But yeah, you just don't get the nanites that come with the actual time loop. Okay, so general extras. Uh, you know, you've got the star rating for sentinels. So one star, you get one sentinel. Two star, you get a little, little faction come along with a dog. Three stars, you get like walker come in or whatever. And four and five, you just get more walkers. It'd be nice to see maybe three walkers spawn in at four star. And then at the five star, you get something new. A giant freaking sentinel type crab creature or something. That'd be awesome. I mean, they've done those. And there, there was that whole trailer where there was three walkers running in unison with a dog as well in the snow. And they, they were running. It looked like they were running after a giant fauna type creature. I don't know what was going on there, but we just haven't got that. And I would like to see that happen. It'd be nice to go up against three walkers simultaneously. Well, it might not be. Who knows? Because it doesn't happen. So it'd be nice if that did happen. Uh, right, what else? So yeah, if you kill like 30 of the little creatures around um, abandoned buildings, you know, when you're hatching the eggs, it'd be nice if a giant mother one turned up, wouldn't it? A giant creature. So yeah, I just want more of a challenge. There doesn't seem to be much of a challenge. When you're fully upgraded and your exosuit is freaking to the nines, there's nothing that can really challenge you apart from one of your own grenades, which does happen to me a freaking lot, to be honest. Um, airborne predators as well. So faunas that attack you from the air. That'd be freaking sweet. And also fauna that uh, sort of run across the floor and take off and fly. I'm fairly sure we saw that in the IGN footage all that time ago. If I can find it, I'd stick it up there because it does look that way. They run behind a rock and then take off. Well, that's how it looks. I don't know. It, I could be wrong. But that'd be so cool to see fauna that actually land. I mean, some of them, it actually says in their biomes, uh, you know, this fauna lands at night. No, it just disappears. Uh, right, so frog fauna as well. We saw in the Infinite Worlds trailer a frog fauna. It, it actually jumps, its back legs move in tandem, so it's hopping, uh, rather than separate and waddling like we get now. So there was a different type of fauna all, back, all the way back then. There's completely vanished. And even in GDC, when you've got the art director, he's talking about the frog and amphibious flora appearing on swamp biomes. Well, the swamp biomes are gone, and so are those fauna types. I'd like to see them come back. That'd be quite cool. Even if they only emerge during storms or something, that'd be quite cool. And it's sort of watery areas on water planets. They could still bring them in. It's an extra type of fauna. And also those weird faunas that were flying through the air with the, ta the, the tails that sort of all swaved around. They're gone. It'd be nice to see them come back. So hopefully we're going to get more fauna. I'd like to hope. That, 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 if we've done another synthesis update, that's the sort of thing I would like to see. And I think that all of those are sort of doable or the rain in the realms of feasibility i've dialed down my speculation and once list to what i feel could be achieved so there we are that's that's pretty much that so i've gone a bit backwards and forwards there speculation spotlight speculation mixing it up i'm trying to get my format right hope you're enjoying this chums hope you're enjoying this now yeah youtube i've partnered with them for about a month now and they've actually set up the members area or well, they've said that i can enable it so i have enabled it it's a little bit different to what i do on patreon i mean patreon get to see my videos unlisted beforehand anyway if they wish and i'll put the link up there for them to watch but yeah on the youtube membership 
um, you're going to get emojis for live chat. So if you had YouTube membership right now, you could use some emojis. I've drawn myself. There are only 32 pixels by 32 pixels. It's hard to draw something awesome in 32 by 32 pixels, but I, I hope I've achieved something half decent. But yeah, you could use them in here. And also, because it's built into YouTube, I can put polls directly in YouTube. I can ask you what you want me to do next on my channel, sort of things you want to see on this Saturday show. And also you get early access to this Saturday show. So yeah, it's, it's more for YouTube peoples. Yeah, whereas my Patreon is more for the ship models and more my creative side. And if I ever did sort of expand out, maybe other bits and bobs as well. So yeah, it's a little bit of everything, but main, mainly the YouTube stuff is there to try and bolster my YouTube sort of presence if you like so you know I'm hoping to get the next gen console I'm hoping to bring you up-to-date content and uh, supporting me via YouTube is going to help me do that whereas Patreon has set that up really to get my 3D printer off the ground and to start a separate hobby and um, yeah so if you have got your biome dome and you only want one biodome and you're not really fussed about getting any more and you've been paying into that you, you've already backed my printer feel free to sort of move over if you want to YouTube open up that slot again uh, for on, on the ship models for somebody else to put themselves forwards for a ship model because I only want to be doing 10 ship models it's hard work so yeah I do one a month I'm doing one by own box a month so that's 10 months of the year that I'm 3d printing and making stuff and then for the last two months I make Christmas boxes for the people on Patreon so yeah that's everything uh, anyway I'm waffling and I think I've given you all the um, the nice awesome stuff that I've seen in the verse and if you have seen anything in the verse that you feel I should be shouting out on a Saturday on this show put it in the comments below yeah or DM me or social media me or whatever me and I'll try and get it out there if it's something that I feel deserves a shout out and it's something that I enjoyed as well then yeah awesome brilliant excellent cool and I'll see you next Saturday cheery bye chums and if you like what you see and you want to support my channel, there's many ways to do that, including Patreon. So you can hop on over there. There's a tier there for pretty much everyone, including ship models. And these are the people that are backing me and getting the ship models, thanking you. And here are all my other Patreons. Thank you, Patreons. It means a well to me. PayPal donations and super chats for all my live streams will help me reach getting my PlayStation 5 and next-gen content. I also have merch and it's quite swanky, head on over to Teespring if you'd like the look of that or you can hit like, subscribe or hit one of these video links or just don't skip my adverts, that throws revenue down my avenue and thank you very much for watching, see you soon!